So welcome friends how are you all so today we are gonna see what if Naruto was academy student of Kamiju Tuma's friend, movie. Kami damn it why does it always have to be so dark and gloomy in here I complained as I walked through the dark and barely lit corridors of a gothic styled cathedral. Since this looked like it's an appropriate time might as well introduce myself. My name is Namika Zuzumaki Naruto, same old blonde hair and blue eyes, standing 57, 15 years old, former ninja of the hidden leaf, and now a member of Necessarius the Church of Necessary Evil. Now you might be wondering just how the hell I ended up in this place and to be honest I really have no idea, but I do have a working theory about it, since the last thing I saw before I ended up in this place was the tear in space made by a last ditch effort of an already dying Obito. From there it's easy to figure out that I either tripped, passed through him, or he pushed me with a simple Shinra Tensei into the rip in space, if only Kakashi Sensei was still alive he'd probably have found a way to pull me out of this place but alas, he was one of many who fell. Well whatever Obito did I ended up in some weird dimension that knows nothing of chakra and ninjutsu, although they do have this thing called magic that works with something they called mana and idols, but from what I've seen around Necessarius it's just not the same as my abilities, I tried learning their type of magic but apparently I was rather incompatible with it. It no, since shortly after I tried casting their magic I started barfing out huge amounts of blood while Kurama ever helpful as he was, laughed at me for being as he termed it a complete dumbass. Aside from that nothing really changed, oh wait there was one thing that definitely changed. I was supposed to be 20 frigging 5 years old this year. But after landing in this dimension I found myself to be no more than 10 and it's been 5 years since then. I had to go to school and sh asterisk t all over again and it was a pain in the ass through and through. Although this time it was quite different from my academy days in Kanoa, apparently being blonde, having blue eyes and these whiskers like birthmarks, and a well-toned body, made me look like a cute hunk whatever the hell that means but I do now understand one of the pains Sasuke had to go through in life. Crazy ass fangirls. If he had to go through all the sh asterisk t I had to deal with then I can't really blame him for going batshit insane. Goddamn puberty and stupid hormonal girls. I growled out as my steps became heavier, Obito just really had to be an asshole until the end, I stopped walking as I reached an old wooden door leading the innermost part of this sanctum, two guards wearing priestly clothes were standing outside the door ready to defend it at all, they took one glance at me before promptly backing away as far as possible. Oh yeah think I forgot to mention I was still one of the best pranksters in this world. The barcode in Steele's face would be proof of that, however that was a story for another time. The guards opened the wooden door for me as I went inside the room. It was a rather modest looking chapel with a couple of benches and a small altar with a portrait depicting the crucifixion of a man, just in front of the altar kneeling down in prayer was a teenage girl with long blonde hair while wearing pink robes befitting of her rank of archbishop. Yo Laura. I greeted her in a rather cheerful way as I walked towards one of the nearby benches. The girl spent a few more minutes in silence before making the sign of the cross and standing up to face me Konnichiwa Naruto-san, she greeted back in Japanese. It just sounded as weird as usual your Japanese is still funny. You're taking lesson right? Aren't you bothered that it's still really bad? I teased her. You you Naruto am not bothered by it. Why would I? It's just the language used in some small country in Asia she pouted as she stomped her feet on the ground. Seriously for someone who's supposed to be the leader of a secret organization she was rather laid back and somewhat irresponsible. If only she didn't have that cold and cutthroat personality she would have been so much easier to get along with. Still sucks I replied smiling as I sat down in one of the benches, so what do you need little old me for? This better be important since I have to go meet up with Kauri Chan I added as I crossed my arms in front of my chest. She smiled mischievously, that itself was enough to already sent alarms ringing inside my head I need you to do something for me I looked towards the door and began contemplating about making a run for it. It's just one small favor Naruto FK no. I cried out not caring that I was in a sacred area before I turned around and darted towards the door, only to stop in my tracks as I heard sobbing sounds coming from behind me. Oh, 
is that how you treat those who saved you from a life of loneliness in the cruel, cold streets she cried out as she continued her fake sobs. Saved my ass. I was doing fine until you and whoever it was driving the car frigging ran me over. I complained as I turned around and stomped my foot on the ground. Honestly I just woke up after I got dumped into this dimension and seconds later I was already unconscious again after I got run over by a car. That was how I met her, should have known that our relationship was going to suck from that, but then again because of that small mishap I met a lot of cool people within the church. To my defense we were in a hurry she replied as she stopped her fake sobs. Yeah whatever, so what do you want me to do? I snapped back as it was really just best to do whatever it was she asking to reduce the pain and embarrassment that it experienced. We're kicking you out she said with an overly sweet and sick tone as she smiled at me. I froze as my mind began processing what she just told me. What I screamed out as I stared at her with eyes the size of dinner plates. Laura just kept smiling back at me the church can't afford any more strays that doesn't pull their weight around here I stared at her. She was messing with me. She was definitely messing with me. Right. Is this because I tease you about your Japanese? I asked. She answered back. I smiling oh no no Naruto-san. This has something to do with the favor Laura opened her eyes as she began telling me what exactly she wants me to do. I just continued staring at her as I heard her ingenious yet totally asinine plan. There was only one way I could respond to the insanity that she was suggesting. F U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U U Necessary evil one year later ring 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 U U U C K K I growled out as I closed the ringing alarm clock and slowly woke up from my sleep. Yawning I pushed myself off my rather comfy bed and made my way towards my washroom. That was a horrible dream I said to myself as I opened the faucet and began washing my face. It's already been a year since I was kicked out of the church and shipped to halfway around the world. Safe to say my friends were quite pissed about my sudden leaving except still he was happy as hell. But couldn't really do anything about it. Just wish Kauri Kolve come with me really could use her company in here. I walked out of the washroom small towel in hand as I continued to use it to dry my face. Stupid Laura I muttered out while throwing the towel aside. I yawned out one more time before I looked out of my balcony and was given a perfect view of the city I live in. Academy City, a city built in the small far eastern country called Japan. Like its name suggests this city is well known for being the home of various schools ranging from kindergarten to university. With 80% of its total population being students. The city boasts to things that makes it entirely different from other cities around the world. One was its technology which is 30 years ahead of its time making it the most technologically advanced place on the face of the earth. The other was the power curriculum program designed to unlock a student's potential and allows them to artificially gain supernatural powers. Students who undergo this curriculum and unlock their power are called espers and are given a level based on their abilities ranging from 0 to 5, with the zeros being the so-called failures of the program and the level 5s the stronger and most talented among the entire population of Academy City. As of now, there were only 8 level 5s and I was one of them. Recently promoted from level 0 actually after he managed to get a glimpse of my powers that I really tried so hard to keep hidden. Even purposely failed some of those tests. It's all that stupid beetle boy's fault and I swear to Kami if I ever see him again I'm going to beat his face to a pulp. Turning around from the balcony I looked around my room. It was a rather simple yet spacious room with a one-person bed, a built-in closet to the side, a coffee table, a flat-screen TV along with various gaming consoles, two black bean bags, a shelf full of various books read manga that I've read over the past year, adjoining the room was a small kitchen, to its side was my laundry and bathrooms, it was pretty simple and I liked it, I walked to my fridge and opened it only to find that it was rather lacking in content. I frowned as I felt my stomach grumble guess I better stock up soon I said to myself as I went to the closet. Grabbing a set of my school's uniform a white dress shirt and dark blue pants, before changing into it before grabbing my knapsack and leaving my dorm room, as I walked to the elevator I pulled out my phone and checked the time and date, it was July 19th and I still had a few hours to spare before school starts, since I have enough time, 
I decided that I might as well grab something to eat before heading there. Necessary evil this is going to be one of those days isn't it? I asked to myself as I ran around the alleys of District 7 while munching down on a sandwich. It's really way too early for this I added as I jumped to my side and hid behind a dumpster as I narrowly avoiding getting disintegrated by a laser beam courtesy of a tall, slender, and well-endowed girl with tea-colored hair, Mugino Shisha known as the Meltdown or one of the seven I mean eight level five espers in the whole academy city. Namikaze-san, please stop dodging so I can move on with my life, the girl said as she charged fired another beam at me forcing me to jump away from the dumpster that melted upon contact with the beam. I looked at the girl again and saw her charging up one of her attacks. I quickly ran around in a zigzag pattern as went deeper into the alleyway and evaded more of her beams. Stop firing your lasers. I screamed out after I finished eating my sandwich as I kicked off the ground and climbed up a nearby fire escape ladder only for her to shoot another beam causing my escape route to collapse and forcing me to drop back into the alleyway. Please stop running the girl said to me as she slightly panted. Shush has been chasing me around for 20 minutes non-stop already. Mugino chan if I stop running would you be kind enough to stop trying to kill me? I asked only for her answer to come in the form of another one of her laser attacks that was aimed extremely close to my junk. Thankfully I dodged, though so I dead panned as I turned around and started running away from the girl again. Why don't you just turn around and beat the crap out of her said a deep and overly familiar voice coming from inside my head. It belonged to my close friend, Kurama, or as I prefer to call him Fuzzy, but, the gigantic nine-tailed chakra beast stuck within my gut. Because I can't solve every problem by just punching a girl in the face. Elsewhere Kamiju Toma who just woke up half an hour ago sneezed causing him to trip over and spill the breakfast he made for all over his carpet staining it. Fuku Da he muttered out in frustration as he sighed and began cleaning up. Plus she really is mentally unstable and I don't really want to beat the crap out of her for it I replied as I looked at my back again to see Mugino with a cruel sadistic smile on her face. Yep mentally unstable I added. Ever since that one incident that involved me and her group called Item getting into an argument which turned into an all-out brawl. The brawl ended with me kicking Mugino's cute bottom, and her developing some sort of psychotic complex to try her best to stalk the living hell out of me and try to defeat Reed Kill me to prove her superiority or at least that's what she says but I think this is more of her way to venting out her frustrations as well as her way of having fun. I feel really sorry for the poor soul who manages to catch this girl's heart. Just don't get yourself killed and don't bother waking me up if nothing important happens Kurama told me as I felt the bijou slowly going back into his slumber, lazy furry but I thought as I dodged another hail of laser beams. Ring 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 asterisk I heard from my phone as it began vibrating, who in the hell would try and call me right now. I though as I pulled it out and placed it near my ear as I pressed answered not even bothering to look at who called. Hello hello, this the one and only Naruto, please talk right now because I'm a bit busy. Yo Naru Yan, said a rather playful voice from the other side of the phone. I swear the way I gripped on my phone I could have snapped it in two that very moment not a good time Suchimikado. I screamed back as I was forced to duck to evade a beam before jumping into another alleyway. Why Naru Yan? Are you getting it on with someone right now? Ha 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 wait until I tell that to Kanazaki Yan. Hell no. I'm already running away from a crazy psychotic chick don't you dare add a pissed off saint. Are you trying to get me frigging killed? I replied as I grabbed a few black plastic bags and threw it behind me. So mind telling me why you called? Okay okay chill Naru Yan. Can you cover for me today? I can't be in class he said with all seriousness. Need help? I asked as I continued running before hearing a loud kya sound from behind making me look back as I saw Mugino now covered in trash, judging from the increasingly mad and downright murderous look on her face she was clearly pissed. You know what before you even answer I take it back, don't worry I'll cover for you today but you owe me lunch I told him giving him no time to reply as I closed my phone and placed it back in my pocket. I turned around and looked at Mugino who pulled out a banana peel from her now soiled hair um, sorry. I told her as I already began going through some hand seals, having a good idea on how she'd react. 
She just stared at me for a while before her face turned red in embarrassment and frustration as she pulled out a small card from her pocket, specifically a silicon card. She tossed it towards me before firing one of her concentrated beams at its silicon burn. Mugino screamed out as the one tiny laser beam turned to dozens and all of them were aimed at me. Tiger, dog, snake, dragon I silently muttered out as I channeled chakra into my hands ranton, laser circus. I said as a bluish white orb encircled my hands before I fired multiple beams of energy matching Mugino's own. The result, both of our attacks hit each other and caused one huge explosion covering the entire area in smoke, I smiled, that was really all I needed before I finally ran out of the alleyway and escaped, I could have used my chakra to climb up to the walls and run but I was trying to keep what my powers could do to a minimum because I knew he was always watching and he already saw me using that attack before. Phew, finally I said in relief as I ran into one of the nearby parks and sat on a bench as I tried to catch my breath. Frigging stalker I muttered out as I pulled out my phone and looked at the time, an hour and a half left until school ha. Huh? I stood up from the bench and walked towards a nearby vending machine. I placed my hand inside my pocket as I began fishing for some change, that was until I heard a loud gasp coming from behind me prompting me to take a look. RFKI though as I saw who it was, a girl with chestnut brown hair and eyes, wearing a light brown vest over a white blouse and grey skirt, she was another level 5 esper and this one had very much the same issue as the previous one but less psychotic. We fought, she lost to me. And now she wants a rematch every time we saw each other. You. She pointed at me as electricity began discharging around her as she pulled out a small coin from her pocket. This really was going to be one of those days, I thought to myself as I started running away for the second time that day. Quoting my friend Shikamaru I decided to scream out Mendokusai. Necessary evil. Damn it. I screamed out as I ran in the hallways of a certain high school as I desperately made my way to my class, I had more than an hour left to get to school after losing Masaka only for me to bump with him out of all people, and since he and I never got along, well we got in another brawl that almost leveled a few buildings, I swear we would be still fighting right now if I wasn't late for school. I swear to god he was responsible for this and if it weren't for the fact that I didn't know how to get inside that windowless building I would have already gone in there and punched him in the face. I increased my pace as I came closer and closer to my destination room 1 to 7 safe. I screamed out as I opened the door to my classroom and jumped inside eyes closed and made a dive for my seat. Phew. I said to myself as I felt myself landing on my soft chair as I wiped some sweat from my brow. It was oddly silent, I opened my eyes and looked at why everyone was all quiet only to find all of the students in class wide-eyed and staring at me ha. Huh? I titled my head to the side as I wondered why they were looking at me, wait soft chair. I though as my eyes widened, I gulped as I found out that I wasn't in my desk, no even worse I was sitting on someone, I jumped out of the chair and immediately kicked off the desk to distance myself from the high chance of pain that was about to be bestowed upon me. My bad, I said as I scratched the back of my head as I looked at the girl I just sat on. A slender girl with long black hair that went down to her back and somewhat covered her large forehead. She also has a rather well endowed bust. She is Fukio Sairi my classmate and our class pseudo class representative since the actual one doesn't do his job. She was nice and pretty but for some reason she disliked me. I don't really know why so many beautiful girls in this city wanted nothing less than to cause pain and bodily harm to me, I think it's something in the water or the climate, or an elaborate ruse created by Laura and him just to screw with my life, but that didn't really matter right now since Fukios was now holding a large textbook and was clearly pissed at a certain someone. N-A-M-I-K-A to Z-E she screamed out as she tossed the textbook at me forcing me to jump to the side and dodge just as someone was entering the door behind me. Gosh, I heard coming from behind me as I heard a loud thud, which was shortly followed by a cute voice who said our Kamiju chan this isn't the right place to take a nap. Everyone in the classroom looked at the door and sweat dropped as my friend. A teen with spiky black hair and probably the unluckiest person in the whole world Kamiju Tuma lay on the ground with a huge bump on his forehead. Well at least everyone was looking at that direction except Fukios who threw another book at me. 
this one actually nailing me in the head since I was too busy snickering at my friend's misfortune. Ouch I cried out as the book nailed me in the head before bouncing off and hitting Tuma as well. Mendicusai Fuko da Tuma and I said in unison as I headed towards my desk while the latter got up and dusted himself off before going to his seat as our sensei the one and only pink haired lowly Sukuyomi Komo. Thank god Komo sensei was already here or else I would have been forced to continue dodging books from Fukio's. Um where's Chuchimikado chan? Komo sensei asked as she began taking attendance. Oh that was my cue our sensei H is not here today he called me earlier to tell you that he wasn't feeling well. Something about feeling a burning sensation while peeing, so he had to stay home and rest today. Ah okay thank you Naru chan, she said as she continued taking attendance before starting her lesson about Epsis and the concept of personal reality and how it is the source for Esper's powers, personal reality huh. I thought to myself as I began jotting down some notes, I don't know if this whole personal reality thing applied to me as well, but I do know I don't get my abilities by distorting a micro world using different laws or controlling my microscopic observations of the world. As far as I knew my abilities were second nature to me. Kamiju Chan no sleeping in class. I heard my teacher scream out as I looked behind me and in fact saw Tuma who was face down on his desk sleeping which resulted in a scene of my teacher trying to wake him up by throwing chalk at him. It was hilarious when Tuma finally woke up and yawned as a piece of chalk was sent directly into his mouth making him choke out and cough. There was never a dull moment when this guy was involved. I smiled as I listened to the small teacher continuously lectured Tuma as the other people in class were laughing. I really liked this atmosphere it was really fun and peaceful, that's why despite being offered another spot in a more prestigious school and offered a lot more perks I said no to all of them, there really was no price for those simple things in life that made me happy. I knew for a fact that I needed it, it's not often someone like me can enjoy the light offered by this side of this city. Necessary evil. The school eventually ended and I had to say it was a rather plain and regular day with no other incidents occurring after the small sleeping mishap. After school I ended up hanging out with Toma as we walked around Academy City talking about mostly random stuff. The two of us went to one store to buy some manga I bought the newest volume of Barzerk while Toma bought another volume of Nun Piece. Aside from that nothing really happened we kept talking as we walked back to our dorm yet forgot to say that Tuma lived a floor below mine, that was until it was already dark and we got into an argument about who was better at fighting games and ended up running to the nearest arcade to prove who was better. You're bad at this Kamiju. I told him while smiling. We were playing Maxell vs Calcum 3 in one of the nearby arcades and I was thoroughly kicking his ass. Ha wait until you see this. Tuma answered back as he pressed some buttons and performed his character's special attack killing off one of my characters. You are so dead. I cried out as my second character came out and began attacking Tuma's character. Ring asterisk ring asterisk ring. I heard from my phone as I pulled it out of my pocket, pressed answer and held it to my ear as I did my best to beat my friend using one hand and was failing miserably at it. Hello? Code Black? You are needed with those five simple words the smile in my face vanished and I knew for a fact that this day was already ruined. The information will be sent in your phone, good luck and don't fail death. K. Oh. You lose I heard from the machine as I saw Toma stood up from the other side and screamed out Yatta extending his arms up in the air to his sides hitting a rather huge man sitting beside him. I stood up from my seat and looked at Toma who was now slowly backing away from the man he just hit sorry Kamiju but I need to go something came up I told him as I turned around and walked towards the exit. Okay see you tomorrow then Toma replied as he suddenly ran past me. Yeah see ya. Don't get yourself killed I joked as I saw the man he hit earlier run towards me where's that kid? I pointed at the direction Toma ran as the man nodded in thanks before chasing after my friend. That's for beating me while I was distracted I said as I quickly left the arcade as I looked at the new mail I received. Termination order name. Kirifu Katsuo Esper ability. Level 4 telekinetic. Upgraded to borderline level 5 with use of body crystal. Sex. Male age. 16 height. 167 centimeters weight. 120 pounds hair color. Red. Eye color. 
Blue, responsible for the recent attacks on level 2s and 3s throughout the city, known affiliate of various gangs and has recently stolen an entire shipment of body crystal killing five people in the process, last seen heading towards school district 17. Approach with caution. I sighed as I closed my phone and placed his back in my pocket. I guess it's time to work I muttered out. This was one of the new jobs I got after becoming one of the new level 5s. I was given the task to get rid of espers that have gone rouge and became a threat to the academy, basically I was hired to kill children who lost their ways. I ran into one of the nearby alleys as I pulled out a small white mask and a folded black cloak from my bag as I immediately changed into a uniform fit for the sole member of the underground group called DEATH. It was time for me to once again to bask in the darkness of this city. After all I can't really stay too long in the light. Ninjas live in the darkness after all, necessary evil. 30 minutes after leaving Toma I eventually found my target hiding in the switchyard of District 17. Not a bad place to hide I had to admit since it was perfect for someone with his type power. Since there were lots of things he can fling at me and use as a weapon. Oh joy. Kirifu Katsuo I called out as I stood on top of one of the many steel freight containers littered around in the area. The red-haired boy looked at my direction with bloodshot eyes. There was trace amount of some kind of white substance around his nose, the kid probably snorted some body crystal. What do you want the shouted as he looked at me with those red eyes. I'm here for your life I answered back, no point in lying to him, kid was high as fk and was probably going to attack me either way. It wasn't really that difficult to beat a kid high on body crystal, I've dealt with tons of them in the past, stupid kids thinking they're invincible after taking a sniff of the stuff. WHO the fuck do you think you are? The boy screamed out as he pointed one hand at me. I felt myself slowly getting pulled towards him and soon enough I was sent barreling towards him. When I was only a few feet away he suddenly pushed me away. Into one of the steel cargo containers. I simply flipped myself midair my feet hitting the steel of the container oh joy Nagato all over again I though as I kicked off the container to evade a bunch of steel barrels that were tossed at me. Stop moving. The boy screamed out again as I kept evading his attacks. I looked at the boy once more and frowned. There were veins bulging out of his head. The teen extended his arm towards me as he tried to pull me to him. I felt myself getting pulled again and this time I let him do so again. I was sent towards him but this time before he could even push me away I went through some hand seals and pointed both my hands at him ranton. Laser circus I yelled out as I sent multiple beams at the kid. What the hell? The red head screamed out as he tried to push my attack away only to fail and get bombarded by explosions covering him in a blanket of smoke. I felt his tug on me vanish as I fell on the ground. Standing up I jumped away immediately as I saw multiple steel beams from nearby impaling my previous position. I looked at the teen and saw that he was relatively uninjured. Although he was breathing hard and looked tired. I'm not going to lose the boy said as he reached for his pocket and pulled out a small case filled with white powder. Body crystal I whispered as the boy opened the case as proceeded to shove the powder directly down his throat before crushing the container in his hands. I a m g o d d d d. The boy screamed out as he sent a burst of his doped up telekinetic power all over the place in an attempt to flatten down everything around him. Too bad for him I've experienced worse. I fired another volley of my ranton attack at Redhead forcing him to stop his attack and block mine by lifting up the earth in the ground to block my assault. I distanced myself just as various objects near the kid began floating in the midair before they were pushed towards me, I frowned as I easily evaded the pitiful attacks. Yes the drug was giving him more power but he wasn't using his abilities to his best potential as the boy stuck to just randomly flinging objects at me. You're too weak to be a god I whispered out as I kept running around, zigzagging as I evaded various object he sent flying at me. Fuck you. The boy cursed out, apparently hearing my insult as he sent more things barreling towards me. This was too easy, grr he growled out as this time he actually sent a couple of those steel containers crashing towards me, I simply jumped over it and made my way around the others, skillfully using the body I've forged throughout the years in the fires of war. I am warrior, while he was nothing but a kid, the result of this battle was obvious from the beginning. 
I smirked as I eventually found a small opening. There were a few barrels levitating around the boy and all of them contained a lovely substance called liquid petroleum gas. I jumped around evading the kid's attacks as I pointed two fingers at the barrel ranton. Laser gun I silently muttered as I fired a small bluish white orb from my fingers sending it to the canister and making it and some of the surrounding barrels explode right in the kid's face. A-R-R-R-R-G-G-G-G-G-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-
I groaned stupid dark side of the academy crap I mumbled out as I just wanted to get this whole supplementary thing over with so I could enjoy the rest of my vacation. I will probably ask for permission to leave the city and go back to England for a while, despite hating how I was basically kicked out, Laura had the decency to allow me to visit my friends whenever I wanted to and I really wanted to see Kauri since I haven't really seen her in ages but knowing her she would probably be around steel. I smiled, I so wanted to mess with Barcode San again. Within Academy City a certain redhead smoker sneezed and got shivers down his spine as a black cat walked across his path and a nearby mirror suddenly broke. The redhead gulped as he hoped he was just imagining things he didn't really want to encounter a certain blonde man. Naruto-san, I heard from afar as I suddenly came into a halt. Oh Kami no, it's too early for this I silently muttered out as I knew who that voice belonged to. I slowly turned around and sweat dropped as I saw a spiky black haired boy wearing a white jacket over his shoulders in a makeshift cape underneath a rising sun shirt. He was one of my friends and fellow level 5, the attack crash Soita gunner, he was good kid, easy to get along, energetic, hot-blooded, but had a rather bizarre habit of saying guts, as well as having a weird power that he tries so hard to explain but honestly I thought he was just BS his explanations. Abilities aside the reason I became quick friends with him was because, he reminded me too much of my old friend and comrade Rock Lee. Hell if I had to say Gunner was probably this world's version of Rock Lee just without the green jumpsuit or the bowl style haircut. Good morning I greeted as I waved at the attack crash before ducking to evade a haymaker coming from the boy along with a burst of unexplained explosion that came along with the blow that tore away a good part of the pavement in the ground. I just sighed, this always happened when we meet and the best way to solve this is either by going toe to toe with him and destroy a good portion of the city which as tempting as it sounded something I couldn't do because to my small mishap with him yesterday I still have enough guts in me. No need to expand my guts my friend I told him as I inwardly regretted making fun of Kakashi Sensei for his rivalry against Guy Sensei. Karma was just such a bitch sometimes, Yosh, good morning my rival. Gunner replied smiling as he pulled his extended fist back and slowly walked towards me. It's good to see that you're still gutsy as ever. Ehehehe I chuckled as I scratched the back of my head, good it seems he wasn't in the mood for an all out brawl because if he did he would have already followed up with a few more punches, so do you need anything? I'm kinda late for school. Why is that my gutsy friend? Isn't it summer vacation already? Shouldn't you be out here in the world enjoying your youth while increasing your guts? My fellow level 5 said as I could have sworn the flames of youth shone within his eyes. About that? Supplementary lessons are, sorry I did not realize my friend was stupid. I got a tick mark almost instantaneously, I know the bot didn't mean it and he was rather dense but to call someone stupid right in front of their face was something most didn't take kindly, thank Kami I was already used to being called a loser the first half of my life that it really didn't affect me much. Must be all that ramen you eat the boy added, this time I had to force myself not to slug the kid across the face. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts I repeatedly recited in my head as I tried my best not to start another fight. I really should learn how to shrug the boy off like Kakashi did but then again I wasn't anything like my late sensei and I just couldn't pull it off, so um what did you want? I asked him hoping to redirect the conversation to something else. Ah the boy said as he bopped his fist in his palm I wanted to ask you if you know something about those rumors. Rumors? I asked raising my brow as I did so. It was often that one of the rumors around Academy was actually strikingly close to the real happenings within the dark side of the city so it was really worth it to listen to them from time to time. Hi. The boy nodded him investigating the newest rumor called the Superkiller. What a stupid name for a rumor. I deadpanned as I let curiosity eventually overtake me as I couldn't help but ask what is it about. The boy smiled you see Naruto-san apparently there is a strange villain going around killing off espers. Ah crap this better not be going where I think it is I thought. I have little info about the killer but from several witnesses the killer appears to be an esper wearing a white mask and black clothing he told me as he took out his phone and showed me a picture of the killer. I froze someone took a picture of me during one of my missions. That was not supposed to happen. 
I always made sure to jam any mechanical devices around the area or that no one was around the area when I did my killings, since my existence was supposed to be a well-kept secret. That was the purpose of death to become something akin to an urban legend feared around the dark side of the academy for killing unruly espers, scientists or even magicians, making sure no one went out of line in fear of the deaths from an assassin that stood within the shadows, that was one of the reasons why I even agreed to the job in the first place despite not liking what I actually had to do, kind of ironic for a ninja not wanting to kill. Where did you get this picture? Someone sent it to me. Do you know who sent it to you? No idea, the person's name wasn't in the message. This was bad, a spy, a whistleblower. Was there a leak in our information network? I needed to contact my handler ASAP. And why are you digging for information? I want to bring him to justice. The person's methods are unyouthful and I will make sure to impart my guts on the killer to make him or her change their ways. I sweat dropped. That was his version of saying he just wanted to beat the crap out of someone. Great now aside from all the crap I had to deal with now I have to add another level 5 who was after my life into the equation. By the way things are going I only needed two more to complete the entire collection. Mendokusei he thought as I sighed I don't really know much about this person I lied. I knew everything about him but my friend didn't need to know that but if this is about the rumor of an esper killer then I'm pretty sure H is at least a level 4. Since there were many rumors going about that a couple of level 4s from different schools were killed or had gone missing. Him, Gunner cupped his cheek as he nodded while processing all the information I gave him, do you know anything else? He asked. Sorry that's all I know, if you want to get more info try looking around chat rooms or talking to judgment and anti-skill I told him as I tried to lead him as far away from my trail as possible since my contact controls the chat rooms while judgment and anti-skill know nothing about me. Thank you very much my gutsy friend. Gunner shouted out as he pumped his fist in the air. No problem, just don't get yourself in too much trouble I don't want to pull your ass out of the fire if you rush into trouble. Again I said remembering how I actually met the boy which involved a long run through several parts of the city to take down a few gangs of espers and unknown to the boy mages strong ones in fact. Ha 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 ill tried to remember that the boy chuckled as he scratched his head in embarrassment probably remembering the same event that I did. Well, if that's all I have to go I told him don't want to be late and all. Ill see you around okay I said as I extended a close fist towards him. Gunner smiled as he extends his fist as well bopping it with mine. Good luck with your lessons, I will see you later my gutsy friend he said as he dashed away from the scene before I could even start walking away leaving me alone with the crater he made in the ground. I looked at his retreating figure as I pulled out my phone don't get yourself into too much trouble, I don't really want to have to kill you I said as I dialed a number in the phone placing in beside my ear as I walked away from the scene. I waited only for a few seconds before the person from the other side finally decided to pick up their phone. Why are you calling this early in the morning death? We have an info leakage extent. The voice now stern asked. Pictures of death. There was absolute silence on the other side for a good minute or two before my handler replied I will look over it for now lay low. Operations will be placed on a temporary hold. Enjoy your normal life until I call for you the person said as they cut themselves off. I sighed as I pocketed my phone mendicusai I said as I continued walking towards a certain school. I just prayed to Kami that this short walk to my school won't end up like the one yesterday. I really wasn't in the mood to go against a gauntlet of level 5s. This certainly wasn't the best way to start my first day of summer. Necessary evil. I walked down the hallways of my school with a smile on my face. For once Kami wasn't being a douche and I didn't have to fight or run away from any psychotic girls that wanted to melt electrocute my balls off or some over egotistical guys who wanted nothing but to kill me. I spotted my classroom and quickly opened the door as I made my way inside. As expected there weren't that many students inside the room just a handful of them, looking around the room I saw a blue haired teen talking with blonde boy wearing sunglasses. Walking towards the two I said Ohio greeting the two and getting their attention as I choose a seat nearby the two. Ohio Naruto the blue haired one greeted back. Morning Algami I replied as I looked at the other person what's his problem. 
I asked as I pointed at the blonde sitting close by. Chuchimikado Motoharu, a friend of mine who was also involved in deep shit around the academy, who for some reason was giving me a death glare. Oh I don't know Naru Yan, might have something to do with the reason you gave for me not being in school yesterday. Hmm. I tilted my head to the side as I tried my best to remember the reason I gave. It wasn't before I heard girls nearby talking about how gross Chuchimikado was, him being a sexual deviant, and burning pee that I finally remembered it. Ah, I smiled sheepishly ha 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 no hard feelings right. Burning pee out of all the possible excuse you could think of you went with burning pee. Chuchimikado said as he continued glaring at me whilst our perpetually squinted eye companion and self-proclaimed fetish king chuckled. Hey I had to come up with something on the spot I lied I just wanted to get back at him for always choosing the most inappropriate times to call me. HNN my fellow blonde suddenly smiled mischievously as I suddenly felt a shiver run down my spine, I see then no hard feelings indeed Naruyan. Shit I thought since Chuchimikado had a prankster streak as well, one that actually rivaled mine, this was not good, you forgive me right. Sure Naruyan, sure Motoharu started chuckling as Tuma entered the classroom. Yo Tuma how did your fun time with the lowly nun go? I asked trying change the conversation for what seemed to be the second time that day. What are you talking about? Tuma said before he was tackled by a blur of blue and yellow. Kami Yan, is finally a man, said Chuchimikado as he placed his arm around Tuma's neck, so how did it go? Did you use protection or did you go bareback? Details, details Algami repeated as he slung his arm around Tuma's neck as well. For Kamiju-san to actually go for lolis and making them wear nun clothing as well, you have good tastes. I knew we were destined to be friends. What the, Tuma said before realizing what was going on and glared at me, I didn't dare to look at him as I bowed in apology. Your sacrifice will not be in vain my friend. Fuko da Tuma cried out as anime tears fell down his eyes. The two pretty much continued pestering Tuma until Komo-sensei came to the classroom and began her lesson. I put my heart and spirit into making a small test for all of you, so I'll go ahead and pass it out now our rather young and strange pink-haired teacher said as she began handing out the questionnaires, if your grades are poor, you will be punished with the see-through lesson. Sensei, isn't that one where you play poker blindfolded? That's part of the curriculum for clairvoyance. You can't leave until you win 10 times in a row despite not being able to see the cards, well be stuck here all morning complained Tuma. Oh, but Kamiju chan since you don't have enough credits you'll be doing it regardless. Crap, I chuckled something that sadly our sensei noticed you're doing it as well Naru chan, you need the hours she said as I suddenly deflated. While Motoharu laughed while Algami went into one of his Ima proud perverted lollikan speeches, I don't really know why I'm friends with the guy but it might be because he reminds me of Jiraiya Sensei. Hey, over there, shut up or it's Columbus egg for you our teacher said smiling, you got that. WTH does that even mean? I thought as Algami and Motoharu kindly for lack of a better term shut themselves up, while Toma looked out the window right next to his seat. I yawned, aside from meeting with Gunnar earlier it was a rather plain day. I like this kind of day, sensei. Naru-kun is yawning since he said your lesson is boring while Kamiju-kun is looking outside the window ogling the girl tennis team Algami said as I quickly grabbed the nearest textbook and flung it at the blue head. He is definitely lying sensei I shouted out as I looked at our pink haired sensei who was already sniffling as her eyes became teary. Agoshi mumbled out as everyone in the classroom was looking at me and probably Tuma who was sitting behind me, you made her cry, all of them chanted out as they unconsciously released their key. It didn't really affect me since I had worse but Tuma was already sweating behind me as he palmed his face. Mendakusai, Fuko da Tuma and I said in unison as we ignored everyone's glare. It was a plain and dull day, I was in trouble but it was still somewhat fun. I already liked this day better than yesterday. Necessary evil. I yawned as I walked the streets of Academy City. It was already late in the afternoon as the sun hung low in the sky giving of the last flickers of its light before darkness took over the sky. 
I left school shortly after finishing that see-through lesson that Como Sensei made me do and hung around the city afterwards. Thank God for my natural luck at gambling. Even blindfolded I managed to beat the small pinket in poker ten times in a row without breaking a sweat. Tuma, on the other hand, well I tried waiting for him but I left after his 37th straight loss in a row. Now that I remember it, Tuma really did have the shittiest of luck because of a side effect of his Esper ability, but really shitty luck for an ability to dispel any kind of Esper or even magic based ability, it gladly give up my luck if I had that back in the war and it was able to dispel that bastard Juubi. Hey there you are, this time he'll finally defeat you a familiar feminine voice shouted from my left. I casually ignored it as I continued walking, I didn't really want to deal with Tokiwadia's railgun now, not when it's such a fine day, just ignore it and hope it goes away Naruto I thought as I increased my pace. Hey I'm talking to you, the girl shouted as I heard her running towards me. I was tempted to actually start making a mad dash for it but that would be too obvious and I really didn't want to get hit by a railgun from behind, I for one though I had the affinity to attract lightning based attacks at myself, to put it in terms I was a blonde lightning rod and lightning always struck me more than once, the scars on my chest carried solid proof of that. Stop walking, she shouted out as I heard her stomp on the ground. Don't want to, I know if I do you'll challenge me to a fight and it really not get into one now, I really do not want to ruin this day biri biri, I said not bothering to turn around. The girl ran before stopping in front of me grow I have a name you know. You and your friend always call me that, my proper name is Masaka Mikoto. I know your name just want to call you Biri Biri since it fits you I told her as I started walking away again hoping she would just let me leave and enjoy my rather peaceful day. She didn't, grow that's it why are you are going down this time. She screamed out as she stomped on the ground and sent a pulse of electricity at me. There goes my day I though as I jumped away evading the attack before ducking and rolling away as I landed to evade another arc of electricity sent at me. Do we seriously have to fight every time we meet? I asked her as I looked around and noticed that nearly every living being in nearby has already evacuated the area. Fuck I know H is laughing his ass of right now, I just know that fucking prick is purposely making my life a living hell and making me fight other level 5 to get more data on my ability. Fucking prick I swear one day he'll get inside that windowless building and kick his ass I dodged another arc of electricity as I balled my feet and back flipped a few times to avoid the current passing through the ground. No we just need to keep fighting until I win elemental master. She cried out as she sent another wave of electricity at me. Elemental master, I tilted my head to the side in confusion as dodged her attack yet again. Don't you know your ability's name? She looked at me strangely as she suddenly stopped attacking. Ah, oh yeah that's what they called it I replied as I recalled the title given to my ability by the researchers of Academy City. It wasn't as cool as Dark Matter, Accelerator, or even Rail Gun but the title really fits me to AT since the scientists of the city believes me to be a multi-skill with high levels of Electromaster, Aerohand, Terrakinesis, Pyrokinesis, Hydrohand, Cryokinesis, and agrokinesis, too bad they didn't know crap about chakra and him doing my best to make it stay that way. The girl attacking me Masaka Mikoto placed her hand inside her pocket and pulled out a small token, I groaned out in frustration you're not really planning on using that attack here right? She didn't reply as she charged the coin with electricity. Well, fuck, I said as I quickly want through some hand seals before placing both of my hands in the ground, Doton, Taju Doryuheki Earth Style, Multi Earth Wall, I shouted out as at least 10 chakra reinforced earth walls appeared between me and Masaka. She didn't marvel at the sight of my move, she already did that the first time she saw this, so now she just kept charging her token. I was already in the middle of another set of hand seals. Try this, 60% railgun, she shouted out as she suddenly flicked the coin towards me, as expected it went through at least six layers of my defensive wall like it was paper before my shields even managed to slow the attack down at the cost of another three walls, Chidori and Reikiri were nothing compared to her railgun, power and penetrative ability it dwarfs the two by so much it wasn't even funny. 
I pointed my hand towards my last wall, middle and index fingers sticking together extended as a bluish white orb surrounded it while I called out my Jutsu Ranton. Laser I charged my attack pumping more chakra into it. There was no real way to block the attack without turning the entire area into a giant forest or summoning gigantic creepy looking gates in the area, that really only left me one option and that was to meet the attack head on and hope my attack stops hers. Crack asterisk shatter. My last wall collapsed and crumbled as her railgun albeit not powerful as before still packed a whole lot of punch was still heading right at me. From the other side of my now broken walls I saw Masaka grinning sure at her victory. Seriously she should have learned after the last dozen times we fought. The only way for me to really lose is if you kill me. Because people die when they are killed and I'm afraid that was the only real solution when fighting someone of my caliber. Bullet. I shouted while my arms recoiling back as I fired off a concentrated beam of bluish white light. Thinking things through I guess firing a high powered beam of radiation at an already unstable and strong electromagnetic empowered attack wasn't one of my brightest idea ever, why? Because the minute our attacks met both of us had to cover our eyes as a bright light that would have blinded anyone if they looked at it directly covered the area, that and there was another huge explosion that blew me a few meters away since I was closer. Wonder what Tuma is doing right now I thought as I rolled in the ground, pain shooting through my body as I repeatedly hit the rough concrete. Necessary evil. Tuma POV. Argush. I shouted as I ran away from the giant flaming monstrosity behind me. How did things end up like this? I thought as I remembered how my day started. Me trying to air my foot on only to find a nun hanging outside my balcony. I also remembered me inviting her inside to my room, learning that her name was Index and that she was apparently a mage who contained 103,000 grimoires inside her head, then the two of us getting into an argument which resulted in me touching her clothes with my right hand, the imagine breaker which lived up to its name and tore her clothes to pieces, one thing led to another with my neighbor and friend Naruto making an appearance in between, before the girl finally left. I thought that was the last I was going to see her. I wasn't really expecting to see her back so soon after I walked home from school. Not only that, I also didn't expect to see her lying in front of the door to my room with a large gash on her back. The girl was bleeding and if no one heals the wound shed probably die. Then this red-haired guy wearing black robes appeared and told me he was a mage. That was when shit hit the fan and before I even had time to react the man summoned a gigantic creature made of fire which began chasing after me burning a good part of our dorm as it did so, he'll die, he'll really die at this pace, I complained as I ran down a flight of stairs only to trip and miss a step, did I mention that the building was designed to have an open space near the stairways to give people a better view of the city. Well those spaces were big enough to fit a fully grown human body, namely me. Arsh. I shouted out as I fell from the seventh floor of the building. Luckily something broke my fall and I didn't mean my likely demise from falling six stories. That really would have been a shitty way to die, well at least the creature Innocentius or whatever the hell it's called stopped chasing after me as it growled at me from the seventh floor as it looked down on me. Okay what to do what to do I said as I tried to think of something, Oh, I know I can call Naruto for help genius having a level 5 around will definitely help. I quickly placed my hand in my pocket and tried searching for my phone before remembering that I had an unfortunate accident this morning that resulted in me stepping on my phone and breaking it. Fuko da I sighed out, with Naruto out of the equation my options is really limited. I wanted to save the silver haired wounded nun from that fire user s weight mage as he called himself. I promised her that if she needed help I would help her, but I really had no way of beating that fiery abomination, I tried using my right hand to dispel it but its flames were regenerating at a higher rate than my hand could put it out. I growled out in frustration as I punched the floor with my right hand, think Tuma, think my eyes then widened as I recalled the wounded nun's monotonous words runes a magical language used by the Germanic people starting in the 2nd century AD, the roots of Old English, Attacking Innocentius is ineffective, walls, floors, ceiling, as long as the runic markings in the area aren't erased, it will forever rekindle itself. 
runes, if I take out the runes I can defeat that thing I said remembering those paper cards with weird symbols drawn in and posted all over the walls of my apartment as I heard another one of the creatures in humane screams coming from above, I slowly stood up, legs still shaky from the fall, I could always call Auntie Skilbert, but, I, I, would you accompany me towards the depths of hell I remembered those sad words coming from the silver haired nun. Who the hell would be stupid enough accompany a stranger they just met to the very depths of hell? I said to myself before sighing, Fuko da I smiled sadly as I made my decision I guess him just that stupid I thought as I ran back into the building. I stopped at the first floor stairway I need to destroy those runes, but there were hundreds of them, there's no way I can manually destroy all of them while evading that thing. I looked to my side eyes widening as I found the solution to my problems, the simple red switch, sprinklers, I grinned as I immediately pressed the button before running up the stairs. I continued running up until I saw the burning behemoth standing tall and blocking my path as it glared at me well I know this time I'm going to defeat you I said as I ran towards the creature right hand pulled back as the creature itself swung a fiery cross made of flames that it formed in its hands. I just hope this worked otherwise it'd be forced to jump from this floor down to the ground floor again. Yarosh. I cried out as my hand met the creature and dispelled it. Yes I pumped my fist as I immediately ran up the stairs and made my way towards the seventh floor before slowly walking towards the red-haired mage who was standing at the end of the corridor, the injured nun index still lying on the ground. Where is Innocentius? The man asked. Already defeated him I said as the man's eyes widened in shock. How is that possible? Innocentius is a block of 3000 degrees Celsius fire. Don't tell me this pitiful sprinkler system was enough to defeat him. You know if you carved the runes in the ground or used plastic cards with the runes I would have been doomed. Thank God you used paper for those cards. The man growled but water doesn't easily ruin paper from a copy machine. Yeah but the water will wash the ink off shit. Ashes to ashes the man extended his arms to his side's palms facing the heavens dust to dust fire appeared in both palms the vampire hunter's crimson cross he shouted out as he threw both flames at me creating X like flaming projectile. I looked at the flame, magic or not I wasn't going to back down, I extended my right hand forward as I touched the flaming blades that promised death, the air froze for a moment as the flames appeared to all but have shattered themselves in the mere presence of my hand. Why I didn't let the man finish as I kicked off the floor and ran towards the man if I don't want to accompany her to hell I thought looking at the still downed nun while I pulled my right hand back fist closed, I just need to drag her out of hell. I shouted out as I threw my fist forward hitting the man in his cheek and knocking him down to the ground, I breathed heavily as I looked at the downed red head as the sprinklers suddenly turned off. Huh? Why did it stop? I asked as I could still see fire coming from the floor below and above me. I don't really know why the 8th floor is burning as well since I didn't even go there. Weird ass mage I thought as I shook my head and quickly walked towards the nun and picked her up bridal style. I guess we should get you healed up somewhere. I said as I walked towards the elevator hoping to leave this place before anti-skill or judgment could even arrive on the scene, can't really tell them that a wizard or mage did all of this, who in their right mind would believe me if I told them so. Necessary evil Naruto POV him probably getting himself into more troublesome situations I though before I pushed myself off the ground ignoring the small bruises and scratches in my body as landed on my feet and looked at the site of our battle. There was now a smoking 20-foot crater where our attacks met. Masaka was gapping at the hole in shock. I am not going to pay for that I cried out as I channeled chakra into my legs before kicking off the ground and running straight for the Masaka. Judging by the girl's expression she wasn't really expecting me to continue the fight, too bad for her. I fight to the end and I was hoping to end this quickly. I took quickly ran towards her zigzagging to confuse her as I quickly found myself only few inches away from her our face were close to each other as we could see each other's breaths. Sorry biri biri tan I win this one I told her as I finished the last sets of hand seals that I was going through before I placed both my hands on her. What are she was cut off from whatever she was going to say as the girl suddenly felt a cold chill in the air. Hyoten, Hyoro no Jutsu Ice Release Ice prison I whispered to the still shocked Masaka as I slowly encased her in ice, 
Normally this technique would have involved me using ice from underground like those Yuki Nin did but thanks to certain circumstances I developed an affinity for the element that allowed me to use the air in the atmosphere to create ice. The very same ice I was using right now to encase the Electro Master in front of me covering her entire body inside a thick layer of ice that would probably take her a long while to melt, since I really didn't want to kill the girl I made sure to stop my attack just below her neck. Phew I said to myself as I wiped some sweat off my brow, it's getting a little bit too late so I'll see you next time okay I told her as I patted her head making the girl's cheeks flush before I turned around and started walking away from the scene. Masaka's eyes widened as she heard the sounds of Siren get back here. She cried out knowing that the blonde was probably leaving her behind so she takes the fall for this one. Sorry Biri Biri Chan, I can't really afford to pay for any more collateral damage. Gomenasai I said lightly bowing down as I left the still frozen and now fuming Masaka. In hindsight I really should have freed her. That would have probably saved me a lot of trouble later on. Necessary evil. Something smells like it's burning I said as I took a whiff of the air. Yeah there was definitely something nearby burning nearby. I looked around the area and saw two girls talking one both had black hair albeit one was taller and had long black hair while the other one was shorter and had shorter hair. Both of them though were wearing the same school Sakugawa middle school uniform and both had flower based accessories in their hair. The two were talking about some sort of fire that happened around the area. Um excuse me I said as I approached the two girls. The eyes of the smaller of the two widened as she saw me while the bigger of the two just smiled cheerfully at me is there anything you need? She asked her cheeks slightly flushed. Cute I thought before answering yeah I don't mean to be rude but I couldn't help but overhear what you were talking about. I bowed a bit in apology but can you please tell me about the fire? Ah that well my friend Uaharu here told me that she just received a call about an all-male dorm from that certain school was on fire with that my day was officially crap, misery just loved following me and my friend. Ah thank you I told her as I tried to hide my frustration away, I looked at the girl closely and saw the white flower on her hair, I smiled while she did bother to tell me about what happened, I should at least give her something for it here as a small token of my appreciation I said took out a petal from the flower. Hey she was about to protest but stopped when I turned the one small petal into a full grown flower. Thank you for the help again I told her as I gave her the flower while smiling at her one last time before I walked and left he alone with her friend. If I stayed for a few more minutes I would have seen the smaller of the two tell the other girl who I was and the shocked look on their faces afterwards necessary evil it only took me a few minutes of walking and as the girl from earlier did say my dorm was on fire while firemen and ambulances surrounded the area yellow tape already placed all over the place to prevent entry why the fuck is it on fire i complained as i stomped my foot on the ground and walked toward the dorm as i blatantly ignored the yellow tapes that said do not enter kid get out of h the man didn't finish as i glared at him wait calm down naruto calm down the man is just doing his job no need to vent your frustrations at him. I sighed as I rubbed my temples my name is Namika's Naruto, level 5 Esper and I live here. Ah the elemental master the fireman mumbled out. Yes now please don't get in my way as I extinguished the flames I told the man as I kicked open the front entrance and bravely went inside. I was so going to kill whoever the hell did this. It took 20 minutes to extinguish all the flames but sadly I didn't make it in time as the fire burned a good part of the 7th and 8th floor as well as the 6th, but most importantly the flames specifically torched Tuma's room and sadly my room which was just above it. I stopped in front the charred remains of what appeared to be the door leading to my room. Shaking my head I kicked the door open making it fall in the ground with a loud thud as I entered my room. I quickly looked around and assessed the damage and safe to say I was shocked when I saw that there wasn't really any damage to the furniture. There were a few places that were burned and charred but it was nothing compared to Tuma's room. I continued walking around as I checked every nook and cranny of my room. No damage, nothing stolen, no traps of pranks set up for me. Good, but out of sheer principle I still needed to go find whoever it was who did this and have a good talk with him or her. I left my room after a quick shower and a change of clothes as a couple of firemen were walking towards me. Did you find anything that showed what started the fire? 
I asked the one of them. No sir, but we did find this the man said as he handed me a small paper card. Ha, huh, I said as I looked at the card before a tick mark instantaneously appeared on my head, that prick used innocentious in a place like this. I thought as I had a very good idea who the culprit was. Thank you I kindly said to the man as I returned the card to him I don't know what caused the fire myself but I'm pretty sure judgment will send their espers in soon to investigate I saluted good job men I told them as the men smiled and saluted back. Pleasure working with you sir they said. Pleasure is mine I replied as I left the two and made my way towards the stairs. He is so dead I growled out. The moment I find that red haired prick I was so going to kick his ass or my name isn't Namika's Naruto believe it. Necessary evil. Third person. It was still in the early hours of the evening but the skies were dark as the moon was hidden behind the clouds. Despite the lack of the light of the moon the night was light brightly by the artificial lights coming from the building and street lights of Academy City. Leaning underneath one of those street lights nearby one of the many parks of Academy City was a certain red-haired mage. The man was rubbing his bruised cheek as he tried lighting up a cigarette while he waited for his partner. It was the first stick from his third pack of smokes that day. To be honest he wasn't really that strong of a smoker he often smoked three or four sticks a day but for some reason he was just on the edge today. When he woke up that morning he had the distinct feeling that he should just stayed in bed but he ignored it and casually continued to his day. That morning he went to a nearby cafe and ate breakfast. Knocking over a container of salt and spilling it all over as he did so. Shortly after that he left the cafe and walked on the streets of Academy City as a black cat crossed his path while a nearby mirror suddenly shattered distracting him enough that he didn't notice that he walked underneath a ladder while stepping on a few cracks on the ground. Those were the obvious signs that something horrible was going to happen to him in the future. Being a mage he should believe in this stuff yet he ignored them since he was too focused on his mission of looking after Index. Said mission went horribly wrong when his partner slashed Index in the back, the girl didn't really mean it. Since she though that Index's reinforced clothing the walking church was going to defend her from the attack but apparently someone broke it, he later met the one who broke it and now sported a large bruise on his cheek because of said encounter. Overall it was a crappy day for Steel Magnus but the mage had a gut feeling that it was far from over, his thoughts were finally answered when he heard someone walking towards him. It wasn't the familiar footsteps of his partner, no this one was more ominous and promised death and punishment, just from footsteps alone he knew that whoever it was it was dangerous. He looked at said person ready to attack with his flames only to stop when he suddenly saw who it was, judging from the spiky blonde hair and blue eyes that stood out even in the darkness of night it was Namika's Naruto, who was currently wearing a plain black shirt and rugged looking dark blue jeans. Naruto what are you doing here? He asked surprised to see the one-time member of Necessarius. Still, the blonde said while his eyes were shadowed by his hair as he walked towards the fire user. Hi, the red-haired mage gulped he didn't like the tone the blonde was using, not one bit. Why the fuck did you start a fire in my dorm? Naruto asked in a cold yet calm manner that would have made those of weak will shit themselves over and over again. Steel's jaw dropped as the cigarette in his mouth fell on the ground. Now he knew why he felt so bad what all the obvious signs of bad luck was about. This was probably going to be his last day alive on this planet. He really should have just stayed in bed today. Necessary evil. Naruto POV. I glared at the red-haired mage as I cracked my knuckled. Steel do you remember the pecking order? I asked him as Steel's already wide eyes dilated while looking at me. Do you remember where your place in the pecking order was? I remember the man shakily replied. I don't think you do steal, so I guess he'll help you remember it I told him as I slowly and menacingly walked towards the mage, but before I could even start beating the crap out of steel my battle honed senses kicked in and told me to jump back, they never failed me in the past so I kindly followed its advice and jumped away, thank god I did since if I didn't I would have been sliced to pieces by thin metal wires. I smiled. There was only one person who used them and worked with steel, Hey Kao Chan, I said as I looked to my right and saw my attacker. A very attractive, curvaceous, 
and tall woman with porcelain white skin and beautiful long black hair tied up into a ponytail that waved slightly because of a small breeze. She was wearing a short white t-shirt tied into a knot at the bottom revealing her flat stomach and navel to the world while also making her breasts stand out more. The woman was also wearing a pair of jeans with one side sawed off revealing her thighs. If I didn't know she needed to dress like that in order for her magic to work I would have called her out on her fashion choice long ago. Not that I complained, she was hot, beautiful, and overall a goddess befitting her title as saint, she was as beautiful as ever but there was something wrong, something was off about her. I gulped as feeling of dread slowly crept up on me. She looked like she was pissed and that was never a good thing. Hello Naruto she said with a hint of spite and malice in her voice unbefitting one entitled as a saint, that definitely caught my attention as my instincts were already going into overdrive telling me to abandon my plans of venting out my anger at steel and run as fast as I can. Um what's the matter Kao Chan? Chuchimikado has told me about your various exploits and I am not impressed to hear that you were doing she blushed and started stuttering as her killing intent slowly rose around her manifesting itself as a black cloak of negative energy, sex, orgies, and starting your own harem, I, I expected better from you Kaori said as she drew her sword. Fucking backstabbing lying motherfucking prick. This is going overboard even for you T-S-U-C-H-I-M-I-K-A-D-O. I shouted out as I jumped away from wires that appeared out of nowhere and attempted to slice me into pieces again. I landed a few feet away before I took in a deep breath as I prepared myself to battle against a pissed off saint. This was going to be a long night and honestly, I really wasn't sure if I was going to survive. Thanks for watching.